Well, as if any Friday isn't, it's always been a big week in the trends. Let's take a look at some of the top stories and why it lit up the public imagination. Ayanda Sishi Wigzel is freelance, journal freelance journalist and political commentator and joins me now. Good evening. It's lovely to have you as always. Thank you. Well, we had a new trend uh, developed just a short time ago. Of course, Sikhle Zikalala, a lot of tongues wagging about his resignation. Not entirely unexpected, uh, but I suppose we didn't expect it to happen today. Let's hear what he had to say. Uh, let's listen to part of his swan song earlier. There are those who have accused us of betraying former President Jacob Zuma. I wish to make it clear that I have supported former President Zuma right from the beginning, from the 14th of June 2005 until today. I was talking to Dr. Fikile Velakazi a little bit earlier on. So he said all the stuff about, you know, the accomplishments and the legacy he leaves in the province. But I think that's where the nub of the whole thing was. Yes, that is definitely the crux of the matter. Um, the ANC is always talking about renewal and unity. But in KZN, that definitely seems to be a different story altogether. Yes, on this topic, they are united in the fact that they want to support former President Jacob Zuma, which has resulted in obviously a clean sweep um, in the provincial province um, with, with uh, 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 Sibusi Soduma. Um, rising um, as, as chairperson. But what I did not expect was that Sitla Zigalala was going to resign this early. However, there was talk on Twitter about how long is it going to be. Some were saying that he was going to um, last until December. Others were saying they'll give it two months exactly. I remember um, uh, political analyst Lukona Mguni did say that he was going to give it around about two months. I did not think that it was going to happen this soon. But what we're seeing here again, once again, is a continuation of a culture in the African National Congress of people not finishing their terms after a conference, which which then leaves, um, which, which leaves the question to what, 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 what happens to the province if there's leadership that does not finish its term? Because now what happens is that the country and the provinces are beholden to factional, the factional battles that are within the ruling party. So the question is, does, do, do people then, um, when it comes to 2024, do we make the, 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 the decision to continue on with, with beholding, um, with, with, um, withholding capacity for factional battles, or are we going to vote for something new? Yeah, I, Fikile was also saying saying earlier that it's interesting on the notion of uh, whether there'd be a purge or not. Siboniso Duma did seem to kind of, you know, have mixed messages and kind of, uh, you know, festival of semantics. But anyway, talk about people not serving their terms. Forget about the prov province and the provincial leadership. We haven't had, you know, I think with the exception of uh, former President Nelson Mandela, president serve his term. So, you know, we're, we're not in uh, unknown, uncharted waters. We're not in uncharted, we're not in waters. uncharted waters. Let's talk about Pule Mabe then. Of course, he was reacting to um, this horrible story um, which is a reality for so many people across our country, um, the sexual assaults, multiple sexual assaults, multiple simultaneous sexual assaults in Krugersdorp. Um, you know, and, and, and the comments he made with regard to this being a wake-up call. Yes, but the problem that I have um, with, with, what, with his position is that he is part of the ruling party and the mandate of the African National Congress is to bring socio-economic um, socio freedom within our lifetime. And since 1994, we can actually have data and evidence to see that they have failed at that mandate. That march, it, it, served, it served nothing because they're actually marching against the government that they are in leadership in right now. They have the the, the capacity and the resources and the wherewithal to actually fix these mistakes. We have known about illegal mining for a very, very long time. In fact, we've known about mine, um, uh, mine dumps um, that have been left unattended. Where, where is this money going that is being, um, that is, where, where is the gold going that has been mined from these spaces? Where are the police and where is the work that is being done, the intelligence that, have been, that is being done to make sure that the criminality doesn't continue? What we're witnessing is a failure from our government and a lack of political will to change the status quo on the floor and then marching when 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 there is when, when media is, is there when cameras are there is not going to solve the issue we need leadership that is on the ground that is actually willing to change the status quo and not just show up on the cameras when something big like this happens of course this is a tragedy and gender-based violence is something that we've been dealing with here in the country for a very long time but there are processes that this government can do in order to make sure that we feel safe and in order to make sure that residents in this country and people in this country can actually have access to dignity dignified work and that is a problem that we have in this country people do not have access to dignified work which then results in people going into undignified um, spaces in order to um, in order to provide for themselves and what Bule Mabe failed to do was to say um, this is where we have failed as a government this is where we have failed and this is where we will um, solve the issues but instead there was once again a lot of grandstanding coming
borrowing from other political organizations, but for the African National Congress, because they are the ruling party, the buck stops with them. Yeah, they're the governing party. Exactly. The clue is in the title. Um, a lot of cognitive di dissonance there, and we, we've seen you know that happen over and over again when um, you know an unfortunate story or tragedy happens. Um, you'll see the political complex there. And a lot of people will say, months later, years later, nothing significantly or substantively changes. Um, and let's stay with the region, of course, Kahiso, Zamazama, Krugersdorp, really, again, igniting the conversation this last week. And this is the crux of the matter. The, our communities are under siege and there is lawlessness in the country. And I was listening to, um, I was actually watching Crisalda Lewis on television this week and one of the people that she was interviewing actually said something that was really telling. He said that we are the police now. And that is, it, it shows that there is a lack of trust between the police and between communities. But furthermore, there's a trust deficit that exists between people and governments. People just simply do not trust the democratic institutions that we have in our country in order to protect them. So they now they have to put the law into their own hands. And that has resulted in people in, 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 in loss of life. Um, vigilante, vigilante, my words escape me, but <laughs> group justice and mob justice is something that is a result of, of lack of policing. But we do not want over-policing in our communities. There need to be resources that are brought in, investment, jobs, better social planning. Right now, our communities live in, in still in apartheid spatial planning. If, and that apartheid spatial planning is literally contributing to the criminality in these spaces because we notice that the police, where the police, um, the police stations are positioned in townships, actually at the the entrances and the exits of townships. And when we look at apartheid spatial planning, that was for a reason. The reasons why there are no trees in townships and there's no shrubbery and gardens is because it was actually made that way, particularly to make sure that people do not have access to resources and recreational spaces in order to enjoy their lives. We need to bring these back into our townships so that people can actually enjoy their lives in the spaces where they live. The fact that ta and taverns and recreational spaces are under peril adds to the lawlessness and the social ills that we are dealing with in this country yeah. and we need to fix those socio-economic problems. I was talking to the CSVR on the program a little bit earlier about pathologized uh, violence and patterns of how we experience violence historically and then how we translate and enact that violence in, in current days. And I, I mean I understand the difficulty with the terminology around you know the mob violence because it is mob violence. There's no justice where there is no recourse and you know due process. You know innocent people and we've seen this in South Africa um, get caught up. But there's also a psychological scar that is left on those communities themselves. Absolutely. You know being caught up in those moments, being doing something that is perhaps even outside of your character. Absolutely. Again, a rewounding of the South African psyche. You mentioned Criselda Lewis. I think we gave a slow clap to Banyana Banyana the other day. So it's another slow clap for um, one of our, our brilliant uh, journalists, of course, Asina Gori. Uh, we had um, our camera crew uh, there as well, both aerial and on the ground, doing a really amazing job. But, you know, stories like that in, in the way, and, and we can see Criselda um, in that footage there, um, connecting, being real, um, you know, moving with the motion of, of that story was really just a, a wonderful moment in journalism. Tell us how, I mean, I saw people just really, you know. Inspiring. Kind of, yeah. It's inspiring. Yeah. Um, best, best way I could describe it. It is inspiring. Sad, also in the same time, because of the work that she is doing and the work that she has to cover. But there's also a deep trust um, that she has gained from the public, which I think is very, very important, just also for journalists in general. Um, the work that she is doing is absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. And it's the golden standard. And, and everybody should you know, aspire to be, um, to be like, like, like Chrysalda, you know, going into, in, into the hole and broadcasting from, <laughs> from the, from, from the hole something that I wouldn't be brave enough to do myself, which is why I'm sitting in this beautiful studio. But I think that she is absolutely a fantastic field reporter and anybody should aspire to be like her. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, as somebody who, who loves journalism, who loves telling stories, when you see a colleague um, respond that authentically with so much heart, but also so much awareness yes. of that environment is really beautiful to watch. I must also shout out Mangoba um, from our camera crew who did a lot of the uh, 
aerial shots. Um, I mentioned Hasina already. Gabi, Neo. It was really a great Neo. moment for TV. It, it is our entire team on the SABC, and we are so proud tonight. Thank you very much, uh, Ayanda, for talking to us as always. And it's lovely to have you. And I'm, I'm enjoying listening to your perspective so much. Ayanda Sishi Wigzel, who is a freelance journalist and a political commentator. Sports up next, and Zai standing by.